it is the consensus of the elite anywhere all over the world that try the process of development and national prosperity. They agree. Not look, wait, the they, they, they agree. Look, even the so-called industrial revolution was started by a group of people. They were Christians. Look, if you if you go and read their history, they were called Puritans. They were the one who led to this to call industrial revolution. They were the one who established Princeton, Yale, Harvard, and all those things. I mean, the Barclays Bank. You get the point. So it is not when you say the people. You know that is why, like I said. That's why John Locke has explained it, that men and women come together in civil society to seek right to life, liberty, and property. And as a result of that, they submit their political sovereignty to, people, to a group of people that, calls, that we call government. Government must be responsible. Agreed. You get the point? Government must be responsible. And every institution, the media, the professionals, and all these things, look, those are, those, when you say the ruling class, the ruling class also involve those who are in the leadership of the, of the media, those who are in the leadership of Nigerian American students, MBA, uh, association, MBA, and all these things. We must collectively be active, even in, their, in our respect, uh, respective decisions. We're saying the same thing. <laughs> so okay, let's, let's, let's bring in uh, Mr. Salifu. Mr. Salifu, you are a professional in politics, but the conversation here has boiled down, has come around to the people coming together to say enough is enough we need credible elections what, what do you think how do you think this will work out for one who is a professional at least speaking from the professional point of view yeah thank you so much uh, for having me the truth is a uh, credible election is uh, a must and a compulsory conditionality for democracy to thrive in any society. Uh, first and foremost, democracy is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And so the people are always at the center of every democratic process. But for the people to have the confidence to participate and get involved, they must see that indeed the process is credible, the process is transparent, the process is fair, this, of course, will guarantee uh, full participation and mobilization of the people. INEC, as an institution, has a constitutional responsibility to guarantee, safeguard, and protect that common interest to ensure that everybody is involved in the democratic process. I know I've listened to quite a lot of uh, uh, comments from my colleagues from Lagos, and uh, I share some of the ideas with them. Going forward, however, I think uh, I see a better outcome in the 2019 general election, given the fact that already there is an, uh, an amendment to the Electoral Act uh, from the National Assembly, and some of those amendments are far-reaching and are going to be very impactful on the outcome of the 2019 general elections in Nigeria. But for example, those amendments... the issue of electronic voting. INEC has been given uh, unfettered opportunity in, Mr. to be able... Those amendments are causing issues in the, between the executive and the National Assembly. I do know that, or we all know that, the president did not sign off on that amendment. He sent it back to the National Assembly. And there's, there's a, there are reports that... Um, Maybe in the House of Representatives, it's been dropped for now. Do you think this amendment would even fly? Of course, I see some of them flying. It may not be all of them, but certainly quite a number of them are going to skate through. Uh, for example, the issue of uh, electronic voting uh, is something that I think you know, uh, resonates with a lot of uh, Nigerians. And I, I will not see... Any, any point where the executive and the National Assembly members will not actually have you know, a consensus on that very point. And uh, I equally see a situation where the aspect that talks to the issue of uh, 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 presiding officers at each polling center, transmitting results electronically to the collision center, uh, being able to schedule as well. These are the flashpoints. These are the key aspects you know, that, our, uh, that exposes our electoral process to rigging and manipulation. Uh, again, if some of these aspects are addressed, 
you know, like we are talking about the participation of the people. Uh, we all know that for quite some time, our elections have been determined by less than 30% of the total voting population in the country, or at the state level, or at the local government level, because of voter party. But by the time some of the amendments are able to scale through, that is going to give a lot of confidence and goodwill to the electoral process. And that, of course, will aggravate the participation uh, of uh, ordinary people on the day of election. But right now, uh, the concern of a lot of the professionals and ordinary Nigerians are the fact that, one, Nigerians should be able to get their PVC because that is the power they have. That is the power they have to determine who is going to be their leader. That is the power they have to vote out any government that is not performing at any level. And again, uh, not just uh, having to get their PVC, being able to come out on the day of election is another thing. And being able to endure to vote and be able to vote right is another thing altogether. Because, of, of course, we have seen where people step out to vote. And at the polling center, you see vote buying. It has happened several times in uh, some of our elections in the past. Again, Nigerians must be ready to vote right, not to sell their vote. Yes. INEC has a constitutional responsibility. INEC has that obligation to mobilize the critical mass of stakeholders across the spectrum of our political uh, uh, horizon to ensure that, indeed, we have a credible, popular, and democratic process in our democracy. Now, now Mr. Salifu, Mr. Salifu, by you, by you, how has INEC performed so far? Well, uh, of course, the era of inconclusive elections are over. Uh, for, for, for some time now, INEC has been able to deliver conclusive elections. Uh, of course, we have a, a case at hand that is, uh, I mean, that is the AKT, an ocean a governorship election that is going to serve as a litmus test for 2019 general elections. And the way a manner INEC is able to, you know, successfully handle that, you know, these elections will determine how far they can go in conducting the 2019 general elections. I see a situation uh, uh, where INEC will be able to make sure, redeem its image, uh, to guarantee that indeed we have trust, we have credibility, we have acceptability in the outcome of our elections. That over time, Nigerians will not even see any reason to go to court you know, after elections, because almost all our elections end up in litigations, and that basically is as a result of lack of credibility and transparency in our electoral process. So I see INEC delivering on their promises uh, come 2019, starting with uh, AKT and Oshun, you know, governorship elections. Uh, I guess so far, Mr. So Salifu, you haven't really answered my question. My question is, by you, how has INEC performed? You're telling me that there's a litmus test coming. 2011, 2015, and now we're going into 2019. By you, have they performed well so far? Or they haven't, and we're looking forward to something better in 2019? Yeah, INEC, uh, yeah. INEC has done fairly well, but I can assure you that we still have a lot of room for improvement. We still have a lot of room for improvement. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Salifu. Let's bring the conversation back into the studio. Um, doc, 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 Dr. Awison, by you, how has INEC performed? In 2011, I voted. In 2015, I voted. And all the things that I get to read in the papers, I'm wondering where and how did all this happen? How were they able to happen? I went in, the place was peaceful, I voted, and I went home. But we read all kinds of things. Vote buying, people running away with their ballot boxes. Really? It's, it all sounds to me when I'm reading it like, like it's a movie. Well, I'd like to start by saying that to me, the failure or success of INEC is collective failure or success of we as a people and not the system. INEC as an institution cannot perform beyond the opportunity given by the challenges that you have in the system. 
Okay. Can the political parties. Can you just hold your thoughts okay. a moment? We'll take a moment and we'll come back to continue the conversation. Please don't go away.